Um, thank you for joining us for tonight's Family Academy. I apologize. We were having some technical difficulties before getting started. So thank you so very much for your patience. Welcome to tonight's Family Academy, Brain Boosting Foods for Kids. My name is Felicia Hyland, and I'm the coordinator of equity and engagement for the school division. Tonight's Academy is a result of a collaboration with Dr. Sarita Golakari of TPMG, Sharon Mackert of Trader Joe's, and Amy Lazov of our School Health Initiative Program, which you probably know as SHIP. I wanna thank SHIP and our presenters for donating door prizes to this wonderful event. We are excited to offer door prizes to our participants this evening. Dr. Lazov will announce these prizes at the end of the webinar and you must be present to win. Dr. Golakari will serve as our presenter this evening. And as a special treat, she will also share a cooking demonstration. Before we conclude, Ms. Mackert of Trader Joe's is going to share some quick, budget-friendly, healthy meals that can be picked up right here in our local Trader Joe's. A little bit about our presenter. Dr. Sarita Golakari is a local family medicine physician certified in obesity and culinary medicine, an emerging field of medicine that seeks to prevent and manage chronic disease and promote healthy lifestyles through cooking. Dr. Golakari is board certified in family medicine, geriatric medicine, and culinary medicine. She is also a diplomat of the American Board of Obesity um, Medicine. Before I turn it over to Dr. Gola Carey, I want to let you know that you can put questions in our chat. We will do our very best to get to as many questions as we can towards the end of this uh, uh, webinar. Dr. Gola Carey, thank you again for sharing your expertise with our WJCC families. I'm turning it over to you. I think you're muted at this point. Can you unmute? Mute. There we go, thank you. Okay. Can you, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Well, again, thank you for the opportunity to let me present this topic, which is very near and dear to my heart. Um, I apologize for the late start. It was, it was actually my fault, but hopefully everybody that has children in the division can relate to Zoom difficulties. Um, we've certainly had our share and we had a few glitches getting into the, into the program. Um, so um, I'm going to get right into the slides, and um, we are going to have a brief cooking se session after I'm done with the presentation, and then I will be free to answer some questions. So, you know, before we really get started, um, I just want to say this, that, you know, this is definitely a topic that um, really resonates with me. I, in addition to being, you know, a physician in the community, I have two children who are in the school system, one who's actually graduated, she's now in college, um, but she's been home and my younger daughter is at home and we are struggling with really the same uh, kind of difficulties that I think everybody is dealing with this in this pandemic um, with how to you know, keep our children engaged and energized at school, um, in school rather when they're actually at home. So um, we kind of decided to come up with this topic to talk about, you know, foods and um, sources of nutrition that keep children going during the day. So let's go ahead and start with the slides. Um, so the topic is called, um, the title of the program is called Brain Boosting Foods for Kids. Um, next slide, please. So why is this such an important topic? Well, basically, um, you know, with most of the organ systems in our body, for instance, skin, hair, bones, um, we're constantly regenerating our cells every day. Um, but when it comes to the brain, it's not really what happens. Next slide, please. So with brain development, it's very important that we try to protect the brain for lifelong health because basically every brain cell you that, that you get, it's a one and only. It's not regenerated, it's not replaceable. 
you get what you get. And so the majority of our brain cells stay with us for our entire lifetime. So, you know, as a result, they're very, very vulnerable to injury and stress and wear and tear. And this is one of the reasons why Alzheimer's disease is particularly devastating because it destroys brain cells that we really cannot replace. Next slide. So why is this so important with children? Well, if you know any of us remember with small children how quickly children learn things and how you know we always say that they're like sponges, their brains are like sponges. Well, children's brains just develop faster than anything else. And the vast majority of brain cells or neurons are formed actually um, during uh, pregnancy. Um, during the prenatal period, starting a few weeks after conception. So usually by the time a baby is born, all of the uh, neurons or brain cells that they're ever going to have are basically in place. Um, so what happens at that point is a baby's brain has approximately 100 billion neurons and that's a lot. And essentially that's 20% more than any of us had. So, you know, a baby's brain is sort of at peak capacity, if you will. Okay. And then as your child becomes an adolescent, about 20% of these neurons are kind of just sort of discarded. They're kind of like weeds. They're just sort of left alone. And, you know, the only ones that we really have left are then the ones that we keep for the rest of our life. Next slide, please. So why is this important? Well, with such a vulnerable organ, it's really essential that we start supporting brain function at a very early age. So essentially uh, to protect and to help nourish your child and especially their brain, food plays a critical, critical role. And this is especially important during school age years from about five until 18. Um, because essentially what children eat can definitely affect their ability to focus and can really affect their cognitive skills or their ability to learn and to uh, mature and develop. So next slide. So let's talk about some of the food choices that can impair cognitive ability. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped the slide, sorry. Um, Okay. Is this where Sorry. we need to be? I need you to be on, oh, sorry. The one, the slide after supporting the brain at an early age. Sorry, number six. Okay. So um, let's talk about some of the food choices that can impair cognitive ability. So some of the foods that are definitely um, more dangerous are things that, you know, unfortunately taste really, really good. And those tend to be foods that are higher in saturated fats. So what essentially is a saturated fat? A saturated fat is something that is essentially a solid at room temperature. So we're looking at things like fatty cuts of meats, um, dark meat when we're looking at chicken and poultry, um, the skin on poultry, and high fat uh, dairy foods, um, such as ice cream, sour cream, butter, and cheese. Um, the other thing that can also impair cognitive ability are foods that are very high in refined carbohydrates. So what are refined carbohydrates? And you know, essentially these are things like the white things, white bread, white flour, white rice, white pasta, all those sorts of things, you know, sugary tweet, treats, um, breakfast cereals that have added sugars. Uh, and the other part of this type of uh, carbohydrate is that they tend to be very, very processed. What do I mean by very, very processed? I mean that it is typically food that is developed in a lab, not something that's coming out of nature not something that's picked out of the ground or from a tree. So let's go to the next slide. So why are diets that are so rich in refined carbs and saturated fats so harmful to the brain? And the main reason that these sorts of foods are very harmful is that they often are missing a lot of really key ingredients that we need um, for metabolism, 
and also just for normal brain function. So what are some of these things that you know we're missing? And these are things like vitamins and nutrients such as vitamin D, um, and vitamin D is really big right now, just with the current COVID crisis. There have been some anecdotal studies that show that vitamin D can actually be somewhat protective um, to uh, contracting and actually um, fighting off COVID. Um, vitamin E, vitamin B6, and folate. Now, women will usually hear a lot about folate when uh, they're pregnant. Folate is very important for neural tube development and brain development, which, again, um, is kind of what we're talking about right here as um, you know, brain function. So folate is very important for brain development and pregnancy and also with maintaining brain function as children grow. Um, some other things that can also be missing are things like minerals such as iodine, iron, and magnesium. Next slide, please. So why do we worry about deficiencies with vitamins and min minerals. And, you know, essentially, um, as I just said, some of these deficiencies can alter neurocognitive development in children. And some of these things can actually affect a child's ability to uh, retain facts and to maintain their memory. Um, another thing that we also see is there's quite a bit more uh, ADH, ADHD symptoms um, including impulsivity and inattention with foods that have decreased uh, nutrients. And when we um, have foods that are, you know, have increasing amounts of nutrients, such as um, fish, fruits, vegetables, legumes, and whole grains, we tend to see um, fewer of the ADHD symptoms, such as impulsivity and inattention. So, um, before we get to the next slide, um, the recipe that I'm gonna be talking about today is actually looking at uh, a lot more nutrient dense ingredients, including black beans or legumes and some fresh vegetables and some whole grains. Next slide, please. So what are some other things that can be, uh, you know, cause some impairments with attention and neuro neurocognitive function are things like artificial food colorings and food additives. Um, so several studies that have been done on food sensitivities and ADHD symptoms in children do show that many food additives can increase allergic reactions, sleep disturbances, and inattentive behaviors in children. And many of the artificial food colorings are things that you see in juices, punch, yogurts, Pop-Tarts, you know, a lot of foods that are sort of targeted towards children, like on Nickelodeon or Disney Channel, things like that, where um, they're looking at foods that are sort of targeted very much towards children. They tend to have bright colors, neon colors, um, which makes them sort of more eye-pleasing and in theory more palatable to children, but in actuality are uh, quite harmful. You're one slide ahead. Um. Okay, I think um, I may be a slide ahead. So I'm gonna let, uh, What's on the top of your slide, Dr. Gola Carey? I'm on the slide that's on artificial food coloring and additives. Is this it? Hold on. It should be number, I'm on, I should be on slide number nine. I, it's hard. For, there we go. I got it. Got it? We're all set. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, okay. So we're now going to go to slide 10. But if anybody wants me to reiterate, I'll recap what I said about, because this is an important slide. So let me kind of recap what I was saying about um, artificial food colorings. Essentially, you know, the artificial food colorings, like I said, are targeted very much towards children, usually because of the bright colors, um, you know, the um, characters, uh, things like that, um, which sort of makes them more attractive to children, but tend to have a lot more food coloring additives and things that can really increase a lot of hyperactivity and inattentiveness in children. Okay, next slide. This is number 10. 
So let's just, let's talk about some easy snacks that, you know, can be prepared for children at home, which are, you know, free of artificial food colorings and, and a lot of additives. Very simple one, um, cheese and crackers. And, um, you know, these are not the ones that, you know, come in like the little packages with the kind of processed cheese with the little spreader. This is really, you know, and you know, all natural cheeses such as cheddar, Swiss, you know, whatever your child enjoys with whole grain crackers. I often suggest Triscuits because they are whole grain and tend to have um, fewer ingredients than some of the other crackers on the market. Um, avocado toast, it's not just for breakfast. Um, you know, it's a great snack for children. And usually very, very easy for, you know, I would say probably kids around the age of 10 and above, um, if they, you know, unless they need help cutting the avocado, um, put that on whole grain toast with a seasoning of your choice. We happen to like everything but the bagel seasoning from Trader Joe's. Um, you know, peanut butter and vegetables, um, all natural peanut butter with, you know, sliced up vegetables. Um, you know, uh, a homemade, I, I didn't put this on the slide, but like a homemade ranch dip um, using, actually, I have done this with everything but the bagel seasoning with um, some Greek yogurt and a little bit of a lower fat mayonnaise makes a really nice homemade ranch that you can also serve your children with um, some sliced up vegetables. Um, this one I really like, and I did do this when my children were younger. Um, these are basically homemade popsicles using frozen fruit of their choice. Um, berries are optimal because berries tend to have a lot of um, antioxidants, which again are very, very important and, and protective for brain health. Um, but you can really use any frozen fruit with Greek yogurt. Um, you can use a little bit of a natural sweetener if you'd like, you know, honey. Uh, or maple syrup and then freeze in popsicle molds. Um, and this is another one of my favorites. I call it banana nice cream. And essentially it's just blending frozen bananas with a small amount of vanilla. Um, you can even add a little bit of cocoa powder if you wanna have sort of uh, a little bit more chocolate flavor. Um, these are all really great and very easy to prepare. Um, uh, you know, healthy snacks at home. Um, I think somebody kind of popped up a question about healthy cookies and um, wanted to know if I had, oh, oh, somebody sent me a recipe for um, healthy cookies. Thank you very much. I will take a look at that and I will definitely give it a try. Thank you. Um, next slide, which is 11. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about pumping iron and the importance of iron. Iron is a very key mineral that's involved in transporting oxygen to the tissues. Um, you know, essentially people and patients that I've seen that have lower iron levels tend to have more symptoms of depression, ADHD, anxiety, and schizophrenia. Um, iron is very essential for good brain health. Um, one of the things that we need iron for, as I said, is for tra is transporting oxygen, and the the brain especially is very very reliant on oxygen. In fact, patients that have strokes, um, the main reason that they have deficits is that they're not getting um, uh, proper oxygenation to the brain, and that's when um, brain cells actually will uh, die off. So. Iron is a very, very key mineral, very key ingredient in producing neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are kind of the chemicals that um, brain cells produce to kind of talk to each other. Um, so iron is a key element that we, we need to have in our children's diets. Next slide, this is slide 12. So let's talk a little bit about, now these are diets that are kind of more targeted towards adults, um, but I do think that they have a place when we talk about children as well. So let's talk a little bit about the MIND diet. The MIND diet is essentially a hybrid of the Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about both those diets in general. 
And a lot of the same principles, these are diets that have been studied in older individuals um, and have really been studied with uh, patients to treat high blood pressure and also um, Alzheimer's. Okay, so next slide, please. So this is an example of the Mediterranean diet pyramid. Okay, so we'll kind of briefly take a look at it. And you know, this is kind of looking at, we don't really use food pyramids as much as we used to. We tend to use more of my plate, but I do like this um, visual because it gives you an idea of the amount of portions that are of things that are eaten in the Mediterranean diet. So in the Mediter Mediterranean diet, obviously one of the key elements is daily physical activity. Okay, so that's something you should be doing every day, not necessarily running you know, a marathon, but something physical every day for about at least 15 to 30 minutes a day. Also at the hallmark of this diet are fruits and vegetables. They really kind of form the sort of base of the diet, if you will. And about two to two tw times a week, um, fresh seafood, moderate portions of poultry, eggs, cheese and yogurt. So really not very high on dairy. And if you look at the very top of the pyramid, it's very, very low in meat and also pastries and sweets. Okay. Now, obviously, you know, wine would not be advisable for children, <laughs> certainly not advocating that. But again, this is a slide that we typically use with some of our adult patients. The picture is blurry. I'm sorry that the picture is blurry. Um, I think it's just the way that it, it was not blurry when I first did the slide set. So my apologies. I will try to get a better picture and maybe um, send it to the moderators and maybe they can um, email this picture to people. The picture is distorted as well. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Well, I will try to get a better picture for uh, the moderators to um, distribute. Okay, next slide, slide 14. Okay. So we kind of touched a little bit on this in terms of the um, picture, but as it was blurry, let's talk a little bit more about the principles of the Mediterranean diet. It's essentially a style of eating that's based on traditional diets of the Mediterranean countries, including Spain, France, Italy, and Greece. And when researching this particular type of diet, what was found was that uh, people in this country, in these countries, tended to have lower rates of chronic diseases. And by chronic diseases, we're talking about things like hypertension, hyperlipidemia, or high cholesterol, um, and uh, diseases such as, as those, um, metabolic diseases, if you will. And there, the rates of this tended to be much lower than they were in the United States and Northern Europe. And they really found that the, the reason for this was because of their eating habits. So um, the important thing about the Mediterranean diet is that it focuses really on eating food groups and not necessarily um, calorie counting or tracking macros, macronutrients and things like that. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next slide. Which is talking about the DASH diet. Okay, so the DASH diet essentially is an acronym for the dietary approaches to stop hypertension. And this is actually a diet that we use readily um, in my office, especially with my older patients that are trying to bring down their blood pressure uh, and don't want to be on medication. So the DASH diet is a approach to healthy eating where we're trying to encourage people to really watch their salt intake. And um, you know, the acronym DASH kind of makes you think about you know, adding a dash of salt here, a dash of salt there. And the DASH diet was developed um, essentially with research conducted by the National Institutes of Health. And essentially what it does is encourage you, encourages you to reduce sodium in your diet and eat a, you know, a variety of very foods that are rich in nutrients and things that will help you lower your blood pressure. And a lot of these foods include foods that are higher in potassium, calcium, and magnesium. Um, again, these are foods that tend to be things like fruits, vegetables, whole, whole grains. Next slide. 
So again, these are diets that have mostly been studied in adults. Um, you know, why are we kind of thinking about diets in adults and you know how they affect children? Well, for one thing, I think most of our habits are developed really up until the age of about 15, 16. So it's very important, I think, to encourage your children to develop good eating habits at a younger age. Um, but the other reason what, that we worry about this with our children is because, you know, brain development, as we said, at an early age is really critical and crucial for academic and social success. Um, and we are seeing, you know, more children that are suffering with diet related illnesses, even when they have a normal body weight, body mass index. Um, and some of these issues lead to, you know, more uh, poor concentration, a lack of energy, reflux, and chronic constipation. And I will add, you know, um, when I initially did the slide set, um, we had anticipated doing this as a live presentation last March, right when the pandemic first hit. And I think that, you know, a lot of these um, things that we're seeing in, in terms of, you know, lack of energy, some depression, things like that, I think we're starting to see that quite a bit more as our children have been more isolated and have been unable to go back to school because of the situation with the pandemic. So I think a lot of these principles resonate even more than they did about a year ago before we really knew that, that COVID was on the horizon. Next slide, please. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, one of the things that we're starting to see is a rise in childhood feeding disorders. Um, and, you know, by feeding disorders, I don't necessarily mean like eating disorders like anorexia or bulimia, things like that. It's more with um, sort of children's ability to, you know, acquire food and, um, you know, eat food, prepare food. Um, and this is really due to a lot of different things. I mean, one thing is we have more parents that are working, you know, we're all really pressed for time. So now um, a lot of us, a lot of times we have to rely on, on you know, convenient sources of our um, of food, you know, uh, you know, we, we have a lot less time for family meals, um, a lot more distractions with technology. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and we're really seeing a decline in home cooked meals and a big reliance on packaged foods, fast foods and eating out. And all of these things can lead to um, having less nutritious meals for children. <coughs> Next slide, please. <clears throat> so what did we find with the, uh, with the mind diet? Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry. I've seen patients all day and I think I've lost my voice a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. Um, in terms of findings from the MIND diet, um, <clears throat> people who followed this diet tended to have about a 55% <clears throat> less cognitive decline over four and almost five years as, as opposed to people who did not follow these principles. So, <clears throat> It's very significant, you know, changes in diet have actually been proven with, you know, uh, research studies with double blind placebo studies to show that, <clears throat> um, you know, we can affect our cognitive uh, abilities by improving our diet. So <clears throat> let's go to the next slide, please. So what do we feed our children? Well, we talked a little bit about, <clears throat> you know, um, processed foods. We talked a little bit about <coughs> the food pyramid, fruits and vegetables. <clears throat> Dr. Golakari? 
we can take a five mm -hmm. minute break now for you to um, kind of get yourself together and we can give our door prizes out at this time. Okay, so I think I'm better. I'm sorry about that. Oh, no, no don't apologize. We understand. So mm -hmm. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Amy Lazza um, from our ship department to go over our winners this evening. Great, thank you, Dr. Highland. Well, we have uh, four door prizes to share with everyone tonight. We have um, two gift cards from Trader Joe's. We have an air fryer and an Instapot. So we've used a random number generator to select four winners tonight. So our first winner with a Trader Joe's gift card is Jen W. Our second winner with a Trader Joe's gift card is Monet Freeman. Our third winner winning an air fryer tonight is Nikki Santiago. And our final winner winning an Instapot is R. Moore. <clears throat> so we will be emailing you information and um, about how we can get your prizes to you. Yeah, um, congratulations. With yeah. congratulations to all of our winners. And I wanna take a moment again to thank um, our ship um, department for donating some of those items as well as our <laughs> panelists for donating those items. So um, I think Dr. Golakari, are you ready to proceed? I am. I'm right. so sorry about that. Oh, don't <laughs> apologize. Thank you. Okay, so um, you know we have a lot of information, information overload. I would say, especially when it comes to food. So, <clears throat> what do we feed our children? Well, we talked a little bit about iron. So let's talk about some good sources of iron for children. You know, I think. <clears throat> when we think about iron, of course, we always think about red meat. I think that's the first thing that comes to mind. Um, there are other good sources of iron for children. Um, <clears throat> you know, fruit, a lot of fruits and vegetables have a really good source, good sources of iron. Um, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, uh, beans and legumes, <clears throat> things like um, lentils, pinto beans, black beans that we're going to talk about. All of these things have um, a really nice source of iron, also eggs and um, <clears throat> fatty fishes such as and things, canned fishes like sardines and tuna and nuts are also a really good source of iron. Um, that little bowl is actually quinoa and rice, also good sources of iron for children, for any of us really. <clears throat> um, next slide, please. So this again is just kind of looking at sort of <clears throat> what really the hallmarks of our diet should be for children. And then hopefully we would carry a lot of these habits into adulthood. So <clears throat> um, I'm gonna focus first on um, the sides of this little pyramid first. First thing we talked about like our leafy greens. Um, we talked about the fatty fishes, the fruits, the legumes, um, berries and oatmeal, nuts, um, eggs, <clears throat> Um, uh, you know, cherries and pomegranates, all of really good sources of foods for children. One of the little bubbles there is <clears throat> turmeric. Okay, and turmeric is a spice that I grew up with my entire life, never really realizing that it was going to be the wonder drug of the future. It's a spice, it's a yellow spice that has been used for thousands of years in India and Asian countries. Um, <clears throat> turmeric actually has a compound in it called curcumin. I did not produce a slide about this. I'm kind of just giving a little bit of information, but, and if anyone wants more information, you're free to reach out to me and I can give you some more information about, about turmeric and curcumin as well as recipes. Um, <clears throat> but what we have found, especially in the study of um, patients with dementia and Alzheimer's is that turmeric and, cur and curcumin can actually be um, very, very protective for brain injury and the development of what we call free radicals. I'm not gonna go too much into that, um, but I just wanted to make a note of it as to why that's actually on this um, slide. And that's what that yellow spice is. <clears throat> 
So next slide. So, you know, this is the question. I am actually not a pediatrician. I'm a family doctor, but I primarily am a geriatrician and see older patients. However, I do get a lot of questions from friends. Um, I think my sister might be watching this uh, webinar. She has two small children herself. Um, <clears throat> about, you know, what do I feed my child? Well, you know, the best thing I think to do to set your child up for success is really to offer a balanced, varied diet and to start doing this at a really young age. You know, um, I think the more choices you give children at a younger age, the, the more options they're going to be looking at as they get older. Um, and this I have found, at least with my own children, it becomes more and more challenging as they are able to drive and they're able to kind of hit the drive through. They're able to hit the Starbucks. They're able to kind of hit a lot of places that we, I might not necessarily have taken them myself. Um, <clears throat> so setting those good foundations down is when they're young, I think is very important. Um, obviously, you know, we talked a lot about avoiding processed and, and fats and processed foods, foods that are high in sugar and trans fats, which can impair memory and focus, trying to keep sugary foods and fast foods to a minimum, um, preparing foods that'll provide a lot of slow release energy, like lean meats, fresh foods, um, <coughs> vegetables and whole grains. Um, next slide. So what else, you know, what do I feed my child? You know, preparation is really key. Now we are all super busy. Um, I think we are spending a lot more time at home. However, I think <clears throat> our lives have become busier in a sense because, you know, we're working at home more. And as a result, I think we're eating at home more. Um, you know, parents are at home, kids are at home. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, in this instance, I think preparation is your best option keeping a lot of foods and snacks prepped for grab and go, keeping foods such as fruits and vegetables cut up so children are able to grab it, <clears throat> having healthy dip options to um, eat with them, frozen fruit smoothies with fruits and vegetables. Um, overnight oats are something that I really like. You can actually make them ahead of time. Um, essentially overnight oats are uh, the milk of your choice. Um, old fashioned oats, <clears throat> a natural sweetener, and some fruit. You just put it in either a jar, a Tupperware, and you can make it ahead and you, it's ready to go for you. Refrigerate it, you can grab it in the morning. <coughs> Hard boiled eggs are also a great choice. <clears throat> Homemade trail mixes with whole grain cereals like Cheerios, dried fruits, um, nuts or seeds. Next slide, please. Family meal times. I always recommend getting your child involved in food preparation. Um, you know, <clears throat> having them help with certain choices. <clears throat> Batch cooking, meaning <clears throat> make food once, keep leftovers for another meal. Your freezer can be your best friend, especially on a busy night when your options are basically um, Chick-fil-A drive through again, or maybe having a healthy meal at home. Um, using some healthy shortcuts, and this is where I think Trader Joe's is a great option. They have great things like salad kits and meal kits. Um, <clears throat> you know, I like that Trader Joe's has is some is processed, but it's least process the least processed of many places that I've seen. I also really recommend frozen vegetables. I think bang for your buck, they're the probably the best option you could have. Next slide, please. Um, so we're gonna kind of change uh, courses a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and prepare um, a recipe. Oh, <clears throat> I think we can head right into uh, the recipe if everybody is um, you know, open to that. After I'm just gonna take a sip of water and then I'm gonna go ahead and start with the recipe. All right, thank you. Okay, so can everybody see, see, can you see? Okay, all right. So <clears throat> what we're gonna make today is a very simple black bean chili. 
Now, <clears throat> I personally don't eat meat. My children and my husband do eat meat. Um, they do humor me a lot with my vegetarian tendencies. But <clears throat> um, just um, for today, I wanted to really focus on a plant-based recipe. So this is using <clears throat> very, very simple ingredients. Um, I'm actually um, going to have one of my daughters go and grab, because I realized I left out one of my ingredients, which is um, <clears throat> uh, Rotel tomatoes. But what I'm going to do is go and add a jar of, um, I'm gonna add a jar of salsa, any kind of salsa that you have in your pantry. Okay. So <clears throat> first thing we're gonna do, and I think that um, the recipe was provided, but I kept it very flexible because, you know, I think recipes are more of a template more than anything else. Um, they're not a hard and fast rule. So this is basically about <clears throat> two teaspoons of olive oil um, that I have in my pan. And I'm adding <clears throat> that um, two teaspoons of olive oil. I'm adding one chopped onion. Okay, and I'm adding about four to five <clears throat> cloves of chopped garlic cloves. Okay, so as I was saying with this particular recipe, I'm making it a vegetarian recipe, but you are more than welcome to um, use ground beef, ground chicken, ground turkey. I have done that in the past when I um, ate a little bit more meat, um, but <clears throat> the black beans are actually a very adequate protein as well. Now, the thing about the black beans that I like, as we were talking about some of the um, ways that we can eat foods like this to help enhance energy, black beans have a lot of fiber, they have a lot of iron as we talked about, and they're a very slow release energy. So um, your kids are not gonna, when they, ha they have something like this for lunch, they're not gonna crash and burn a couple of hours later. Next ingredient, <clears throat> I'm gonna add my salt and pepper. And <clears throat> this is really the taste, but it's about a half a teaspoon of each. And this is really just to get <clears throat> the um, onion to sweat a little bit, if you will. It means it just to draw some of the water out and to help it cook. Next thing I'm adding is <clears throat> um, some garlic powder. And this is about um, two teaspoons of garlic powder and about a teaspoon of onion powder. <clears throat> Go ahead and saute all of this. Okay, now, <clears throat> as this is sauteing, um, you're gonna start to um, see some of the water coming out of the onions. You're gonna see things starting to caramelize. I'm waiting for my onion, my pan to get a little bit hotter than it is. <clears throat> okay, the next thing I'm adding <clears throat> are some chopped red peppers. Now again, this is a very adaptable recipe because I know I'm gonna hear from a lot of people saying, oh, my kids don't eat onions, my kids don't eat peppers, <clears throat> maybe my kids don't eat black beans. Very flexible, you can adapt this recipe. You know, if, you, <clears throat> if your kids don't like red peppers, don't add them. You know, if they don't like black beans, try um, maybe half a can of black beans and <clears throat> ground turkey and build on this and add maybe a little bit more black beans the next time that you make the, um, that you make the recipe, okay? 
So I'm cooking this down just because I know we are starting to <clears throat> get a little bit close to the time period. And I do want to have time for your questions. So this is two teaspoons of cumin. This is about two tablespoons of chili powder. <clears throat> and you know, you can use McCormick's. Another question I get is where do I source my spices? To be honest with you, I get most of them at the Indian grocery store or Costco. Um, but I think um, <clears throat> I tend to use a lot of spices. So I get very, very um, big containers. Um, I think if you're just starting out and experimenting, I would try some smaller um, bottles of spices to see which ones you like. Okay, so I'm going to let this cook down. Now, this is where I would typically add my <clears throat> Rotel tomatoes. Um, since I did not have any in my pantry, I'm actually going to use this fresh salsa that we have. And this is kind of another way that I like to encourage people to, you know, a lot of times I think when we don't have something in the house, we get very intimidated. Um, we get intimidated because we think that, you know, all right, the recipe is just not going to work because I don't have a particular ingredient. A lot of times you can substitute things. I've substituted jarred spaghetti sauce. I've substituted um, tomato paste, um, tomato, just canned tomato sauce, whatever I had on hand. So the other thing that I really encourage patients that come into my office that want to learn more about cooking and cooking techniques and things like that is I really encourage them to not always stick 100% to a recipe and to sometimes realize that adaptation is key when you don't have particular ingredients um, right there accessible to you. So next thing I'm going to do is add black beans. <clears throat> And I'm gonna have my helpers get me a little bit of water in this bowl. <clears throat> and at this point, we're gonna add the water and let it cook down. And <clears throat> this dish is like almost 90% ready. Now, some other questions I've had, I know that we are selling, or sorry, we're, we are giving an Instant Pot away as a, as a giveaway. This is something that you could very easily do in the Instant Pot. You could easily use dried beans if you wanted to. Okay, so this is now about, <clears throat> I'd say probably 60% done. I'm gonna put the cover on this and let it cook and <clears throat> I just pulled out some other ingredients that you can add. And this is, you know, the Trader Joe's roasted corn. Um, I'm actually, as a topper, um, look at those, as a topper for this, instead of doing um, cornbread or tortilla chips, I'm actually using <clears throat> the Trader Joe's um, uh, cornbread bites absolutely delicious. <clears throat> um, these are really, really nice on their own, but they're really nice on top of um, really any kind of chili. Okay, so I'm going to let that kind of cook down a little bit. Um, that's really like 90% of the um, of the dish. <clears throat> and I'll plate it up for you so you, we can look at it after we're done with the top. Um, but this is kind of a good a good place for me to answer questions if there are any questions. Right now, I will ask our participants if they would like to ask questions to please begin putting them in the chat, um, and then I will field them as we receive them. <clears throat> Dr. Lazar, do you have any um, questions that you get from 
families of ship. We do get a lot of questions about um, protein and how much protein children need to be eating. Okay, so, you know, for children, it really depends on the age. You know, um, the amount of protein varies greatly um, depending on the age of the child and also on um, the activity level of the child. You know, children that are or athletes <clears throat> are the ones that we tend to, you know, encourage more protein. Um, you know, I don't generally recommend like a hard and fast amount, um, but I what I recommend is um, <clears throat> essentially having a lean protein source with each meal. Um, and like I said, I think a lot of times we are very fixated on, you know, kids protein intake, um, but generally, um, and this is one of the things that I, I'm starting to see more and more of with patients that are on keto diets, keto diets, meaning the ketogenic diets, which are very, very low in carbohydrates is that um, <clears throat> we are starting to see some renal issues or kidney issues with, with um, adults that are, that are taking in too much protein. So I don't generally recommend a particular amount. Um, if, if, pe if people want specific sort of um, amounts of protein, um, I recommend, um, you know, looking at their weight. But in terms of sources of protein, is that the question that I'm getting? Or the question is, what non-dairy alternatives can you suggest for calcium intake? Okay, I think we just got another question about, we just got a question about non-dairy sources um, of calcium. Okay, so <clears throat> some good non-dairy sources of calcium. I honestly think that one of the best non-dairy sources of calcium are cruciferous vegetables. Um, by cruciferous vegetables, I'm talking about cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts excellent source of calcium, fiber, antioxidants, flavonoids. Um, very, very good for, especially for kids that um, have constipation issues and need more fiber. So you're kind of hitting two things at the same time with the calcium and the fiber, but those are generally my favorite sources of increased calcium. Um, the next question is how much turmeric should be given to children and can they take supplements? Um, in terms of the spice amounts, I usually say to start out slowly. I always recommend the spice more than the supplements if possible, because it's usually processed a little less. Um, you know, the supplements, I am not a pediatrician, so I do have to sort of, you know, preface that question in terms of the, um, amount that I would recommend with a spice, I would recommend starting out with about an eighth of a teaspoon. Um, and usually when you're cooking with turmeric, you do want to cook it with a little bit of either red pepper or black pepper. That's when you get the best effect of the antioxidants. And then the next question is, what type of food sensitivity testing would you recommend for children 10 years older and younger, not for skin breakdown? Okay, S good question just got a question about um, <clears throat> food sensitivity and how to test for food sensitivity. Um, I don't know whether the pediatricians are using this because I, like I said, I don't, the only child, I only see children in my office for um, weight management. I don't see them for um, pediatric issues, like as a primary care doctor for, for um, children. But what I have been doing with my own patients in my practice is patients that want to get nutritional DNA testing, there are several companies that do nutritional DNA testing, which look for very specific food sensitivities. Um, I believe that they're geared more towards adults, but they do have some test kits um, geared towards children. Um, if people want more information about that, I can provide that to the moderators. Um, and do you have any Recommendations on specific cooking books. Lord have mercy, today. <laughs> Sorry, I just got a really good question about cookbooks, and my and my my kids are laughing because I'm a bit of a cookbook hoarder. Um, girls, go pick out a couple of cookbooks, which um, you know are my favorites. 
so my kids are picking out my cookbooks for me. If you saw how many cookbooks I actually have in my house, it would be quite embarrassing. But there are several that I recommend. In terms of, I, I always um, uh, recommend with cookbooks that you look at your cooking level and cooking ability. To start out with, probably one of my most favorite cookbooks is actually that green one over there, How to Cook Everything. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorites. This is How to Cook Everything by Mark Bittman. This is the vegetarian version, but he actually has a really nice, um, uh, just not, you know, it, just a regular one called How to Cook Everything. It's a yellow cover, I believe. Um, I can, you know, that's a great, great book for basics and foundations. Um, for doing things with the kids, I absolutely love this book. Um, this was something that I actually got at Costco. I love this. It's great to do with children. I've actually talked to my niece and nephew about some of the recipes in this book. It's very, very geared towards science geeks like myself. I love this book. Um, so that's another one that I really like. This is another favorite. I don't think that this is actually released by Trader Joe's. So apologies and ahead of time to Trader Joe's, but I love this book. It basically, um, looks at a lot of sort of nice things that they have at Trader Joe's and um, <clears throat> gives you some really good ideas about how to pack lunches and some different ideas, some creative ideas. Get one of my vegan cookbooks. Mm, I'll show one more. I could spend all day doing this, but you probably want to see some different things. Um, this is another book I really like. Um, it's a way of looking at how to make some vegan um, pantry items, um, like cheeses and things like that, um, spice blends, really like this one. I hope that helps. That was Anything great. else? That was scary. <laughs> What's up? I said, that was great. Thank you so much. And I think that wraps up our questions and we want to be able to give Miss um, Mackert some time from Trader Joe's mm -hmm. to talk about some quick, easy, um, healthy, things that you can pick up, some pre-prepared things that you can combine for a, a quick, healthy dinner. You, you okay. Know. And I just want to make a, I just want to show one more thing that I really love, which we are going to have for dessert. And this is the um, Trader Joe's um, dark chocolate covered strawberry pieces. You don't even have to thaw them. You take them right out. We are going to be eating this for our dessert. Um, berries are full of antioxidants. Very, very, very good for brain health. So um, I hope that this has given everybody some tips. Um, while you guys are talking to Ms. Macker, I'm gonna go ahead and plate this um, and show you um, what it looks like. And then I'll show you the bowl of uh, the chili at the end of the session, okay? Perfect. And we want look, and tell your daughter, thank you for um, serving as the moderator for the questions. I really appreciate that. And we have comments that we love the dog in the background. <laughs> Good. Ms. Okay. I have, I'm going to go, I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully you can see this. And this is the information that you provided for us. Let me get it. Sharon, are you there? You're muted. Ms. Mackert, can you unmute yourself? Can you hear? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Super. Okay. Are you? First of all, can I just say, Dr. Golakari, how much I thoroughly enjoyed your presentation? I've been writing, 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 loving everything <laughs> that you've shared. Um, I, I think it was an excellent, comprehensive presentation, and I especially really rec um, like your recommendations to create good habits, good foundation with kids, uh, cooking, and you know, have them have them help cook in the kitchen, have them help pick out uh, recipe ideas and, and, and make, um, you know, dinner plans um, and meal plans um, and, and get them involved early on. Um, I would like to um, comment on something that you mentioned about food additives. Um, and I totally agree that, um, and Trader Joe's 
has um, basically a whole list of items, uh, ingredients that are not included in our foods. For example, um, we have no artificial flavors, no artificial colors, no artificial preservatives, um, no MSG, uh, no genetically modified ingredients, no hydrogenated oils, uh, no trans fats, um, um, and no high fructose corn syrup. And um, we do have colored foods, like in, you know, some candies and things like that, but they're, those colors are derived only from naturally available products. So I did want to um, share that because you did mention it, um, how important it is to make sure we're not putting FD&C numbers, you know, red and yellow in, in our kids' foods or, or in any of our foods. Um, I uh, was just, you know, raising my hand and very excited that you mentioned um, some of our pre-made salad kits and dinner saute kits, which is something that is very, very popular. Um, you did mention, you know, we are busy. We're so busy. Um, families do have less time to prepare meals, which sometimes does, you know, have them take that turn to the fast food restaurant. But if you can pick up some pre-made um, salad kits or saute kits that are made from whole foods, um, you can avoid that and, and feed your family um, healthy ingredients. I have put together, um, and I, these will be available at Trader Joe's in a folder by our customer service desk for anybody to come by and pick up. Um, just uh, one sheet that's got a listing of um, a bunch of our sautés and salad kits like garbon garbanzo beans and greens sauté bowl, our Southwest style sweet potato sauté bowl, our Asian stir fry vegetable sobo nuda stir, stir fry, some pesto veggie kit um, that you can quickly um, sauté um, or mix up and then add a, you know, um, a lean protein, a salmon, grilled or roasted chicken or eggs or beans, um, rice cauliflower, brown rice to make a really filling, tasty meal for your family. Um, also, um, for lunch, one of the things I tell people is to go visit our salad um, display over by the dairy area because one of the things people think of uh, for pre-made salads is, you know, that's a meal for one, but these easily can be a side salad uh, for two or a snack for a couple of kids when they come home from school. And I do recommend, you know, maybe not using all of the dressing that's in the, the salad kit, maybe just half, or trying out some of our new vegan, low-fat, and low-sugar dressings in the salad section that are absolutely delicious. Um, like our green goddess, uh, like our turmeric um, dressing, almond and turmeric dressing. Um, there's another one that's a, um, a Southwest cashew dressing that's extremely popular and very tasty. Um, also with snacks that you mentioned, I was, you know, cheering you on when you were talking about the snacks as well. Um, smoothies could be a wonderful snack for, you know, kids to put in some almond milk, some frozen banana slices, some peanut butter and chia seeds and whip that up and have a very satisfying um, snack or orange juice with spinach and uh, blueberries, maybe a little protein powder or maple syrup to sweeten it up a little bit. Um, we also have Trex Mix bags, Trex Mix bags um, that have, they're like a package with 10 little in in individual servings of Trek mixes that have nuts and seeds and dried fruit. So they're, you know, going to sustain your energy for a little bit longer and keep you from eating, you know, um, a sugary snack. Also, my kids loved and still do love uh, roasted kale or broccoli chips to put in that 400 degree oven uh, with a little bit of olive oil and, and salt and pepper or the everything but the bagel seasoning. Kids just they, my whole family just loves those. Um, pumpkin seeds are a great snack. So we've, I've put together some of these ideas and they're on a sheet at Trader Joe's. Um, we are, uh, we also have, our website has hundreds of recipes for meals. 
appetizers, soup, salads, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Um, one, and you could scroll through and pick out, you know, people are always looking for some new ideas for dinner. And you could pick out the ones that are more, you know, health, health focused. One thing I saw for breakfast was a golden milk chia pudding that has turmeric, ginger, coconut milk, and chia seeds um, in it. That can be really yummy for breakfast or snack. So um, we're here um, to, to serve the community, help people. Um, you can just come into the store, and if you need some assistance, um, ask for me or one of the other crew members that's all about healthy eating with our families. Thank you. Ms. Macker, thank you so much for sharing that information. Now, you, you, you see me often in Trader Joe's picking up quite a few of the things that you mentioned on your list. So we really appreciate that. And I need to let our audience know that we had some te technical difficulties getting you in. So I apologize that yeah. they're not able to see your face, but I am certainly happy that you're able to join us and share this wonderful information. And then I'm going to turn it back over to Dr. Gola Carey to share her um, Stop sharing my screen to share our final meal, and then we will wrap it up. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So, just wanted to show what the what the dish looks like. Um, you know, I just tried to make it look a little prettier. Garnished it with a little bit of um, <clears throat> uh, cilantro. Again, I know a lot. Of, not everybody likes cilantro, and we just plated it up with the little. Um, cornbread, um, pepper jack, and serrano chili peppers. Now, the, the, the chili peppers may be a little bit spicy for kids. Um, you can make a pepper-free version with like a cornbread mix. I think Trader Joe's actually has an excellent cornbread mix. Um, we do. And, you know, um, and I have done this where I've done cornbread mix, some roasted corn, leave the chili out, a little bit of um, cheese, and um, you got like a really fantastic dinner. And you know, I get this question a lot. Do I do this after work? Um, well, now I have two kids that can cook, so <laughs> not every day. And this is where I'm, this is where I was saying, you know, being able to teach your children how to prepare meals will become invaluable. You know, um, as they get older, I have one that's starting college or has started college, will be moving to an apartment at the end of the year. And I feel like a lot of the things that she has learned cooking, you know, next to me, she'll now be able to take with her to college and I can feel confident that she can feed herself healthy, um, nutritious meals that are going to keep her going while she's, you know, knee deep in her studies. Um, so I hope that this was helpful. I know that this is such a difficult time for everybody, especially those of you with really small children. Mine are a bit older, so, um, you know, in that sense, uh, things have been a little bit easier, but, you know, I, I think that this is going to be a better year for us. Um, and I hope that um, everybody is able to navigate it, you know, in a healthy way. And I hope that we've, I've been able to give you some um, tips and tricks that may help your children and you um, deal with things um, and have a little bit less stress in the home. This has been awesome information, Dr. Golakari. I'm sure I, I was trying to take notes, but I'm going to have to go back and watch the video because I couldn't control the um, PowerPoint and get all the notes that I wanted. But the information has been great. We thank you again for sharing your expertise with us and for joining us this evening. Dr. Lazav, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, no, just thank you uh, for a wonderful presentation, and we'll be reaching out to our door prize winners to let you know where you can pick up your prizes. Perfect. And I, we will also post this video on the division website, on, on our website, on our YouTube channel. Um, so if you have a YouTube um, channel, just go to YouTube, put in WJCC schools, and you will be able to find it there share it with your friends and um, let them know the information that they may have missed if they didn't join us today. So with that, I am going to say thank you and good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Dr. Golikari, enjoy your dinner. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>